Hey everyone, so today I just wanted to talk about uh, different reads for different needs and um, particularly about like just kind of like cane quality opening size, just like the things that we can't help that just naturally differ in reads and how I think these can kind of be strengths. Um, so I have three reads that I just want to play and I made all three of these in one and I tied all three of them in the same, like at the same time. And so I just want to kind of uh, soak them and try them. Uh, they're all very different in their own ways. And so I just kind of wanted to try them for you guys. So um, the first read, uh, these are all reads that are um, off the same shape. Like they're, you know, very similar um, uh, stats, same staples, Pfeiffer Mac shape. Um, finally figure that shape out, kind of. Um, so here's the first one. It has a moderate, smallish opening. It's soft cane. Um, I'm just going to play it. So it's a very nice, very, has a very, there's a real nice element of creaminess to that. I do like it very much. It almost feels so refined and nice that it's kind of like, it's kind of almost feels like it won't last very long, <laughs> that kind of feeling, but it's, it's really good. Like it's in its prime. I can uh, just play on it comfortably. You don't have to break it in really. But I did take a couple of sessions on it, you know, um, two or three scraping sessions. So here is a read that's very similar in opening size, but it's on slightly more, um, slightly maybe harder cane, you could say, but it's definitely on harder cane. If you were to see the grain quality. a bit of a springier, more vibrant sort of quality to it. Uh, less matted, perhaps, more uh, vibrant in some way, electric or something. Um, yeah, it's very nice, though. Uh, let me see. I really do like something about it. It's very refreshing. Um, it has a bit more of um, higher partials to it, perhaps, in the sound. Uh, and then there's this reed, which is a little shorter than the other two, but it was it's much more open. And uh, all of these are not super long at all, because I tied them like 71 and a half, and I just kind of finished them at whatever length they wanted to. I just... Kind of, I, I'm experimenting with just starting with the tip at a roughly almost already finished length and just finishing with very few clips. That's what I've, um, and I've found actually it has, the, has a very nice result. And I'll talk about that in a different video, why I think that it has such a nice result and why I think tying long and short do different things. Um, so then this is a read that has a much bigger opening and it's on a piece of cane that's in between the two, grain quality wise, not not as hard as the last read I played and not as soft as the first read I played, cane, cane quality wise, like grain wise, but um, bigger opening. So let's see. And this I would say has a bit of a diff, both of those other reads could, would I think project fine in orchestra too, but they have a bit of a more compact feeling. This feels compact, but quite big. And I think it would be great for like, something that requires you to really um kind of almost soar in a like a like a very like makes people's eyes get big kind of way over a big orchestra do i think this is the
the best read for everything? No, I much prefer those other two for mo for many scenarios, like recital, something like that, intimate scenarios. But for something where you really have to play big, what is that solo in? Uh, Yeah, this read almost feels too big to me in a weird way. Like flappy almost, but. Yeah, it almost feels kind of um. like it's so big that I almost can't even find a vibrato scent like point in it. I don't know, but I like it for certain things. It would feel really good on like maybe something where where you wanted the sound to just um, overtake people, like, just the sheer size of the tone, and, uh, that can actually have a place musically, very much so, where the size and kind of, uh, this kind of gargantuan quality of the, about the tone, uh, is what is supposed, is gonna make the right kind of impression on the audience color-wise, as opposed to, like, things like vibrato and other things like that. There is a time for that, and I do like this read, like, it feels, it feels good to me, it's just a little bit, um, and there's a little more out of the back, perhaps. Maybe I was trying to collapse it slightly. But it's, um, but it does definitely have less of that trim quality. But I, I, I don't mind it. I feel like my oboe trims things pretty well. In fact, many people would love this for... Oh, my trill key is sticking. What the heck? It doesn't quite feel right for that. I don't know, it feels good for maybe Brahms. Uh, maybe Wagner. I forget the ending. Whatever, just quit while I'm ahead. Okay, so that um, that's kind of the quality of this read, and it's kind of it's enjoyable to play on. Um, it articulates easily. It has very good function. It just uh, feels a little big. That's all, and I don't mind that. It'll be good for something. Yeah, I like that. I honestly love the the sort of impression, the sheer tone, the, the size of the tone can give itself. That can be of great importance in certain kinds of music. Um, so uh, yeah, I like all these reads. I don't think I'll use the really big one for the Rudder Requiem tomorrow. <laughs> We're playing the complete Rudder Requiem tomorrow and that really doesn't require uh, like a very big sort of read. Um, so, I probably won't use that read, but I'm definitely saving it. It's good for something. So yeah, I just wanted to talk a little about that. I love read choice and talking about just like how to like alter the voice of the oboe. Well, you know, it's it's really fun because uh, much of it is not really up to us. It's like up to the cane and uh, it's kind of fun. It's kind of like almost like a, a little godsend when, you know, God sends you like a piece of cane that's like kind of like this way or that way and maybe it's not a read for now but it's a it's like a blessing for later you know and it's kind of it's just kind of fun to uh experience read making along those lines like wow I have all these different vocal cords to choose from all these different well I don't have that many right now you're probably like what the heck but guess what guess what all of these work I don't keep reads that don't work in my case okay I keep them in a different case. <laughs> in my primary case, I make sure they work. This is just the case where I'm like, okay, everything I know is like, is good and polished. And then all the other crud I like, you know. But lately I haven't been making really as many. Um, uh, but I have, 
since stopping the business, I have been actually just kind of going back to like, okay, making reads for myself. What does that feel like? Uh, what does it feel like to make a read just for me that I like, as opposed to a read that I'm like, oh, well, someone else might think this is sharp because they might put more embouchure on it, or they might take in more read. That has been a problem in my read making business uh, is that uh, a lot of people have reached out to me uh, kind of talking about, oh, like, I really like the read, but I play slightly sharp on it. And I'm like, I just don't take in that much read. Um, and so, uh, but some people do take in more read. And I feel like there's a benefit to that. I feel like I take in more read than people think I do. But like, I just play things flat. So it's just kind of, I, I don't know, big lips. I'm, I'm, I'm six feet tall. Um, <laughs> I have a big oral cavity. Um, and, uh, you know, so it's just, it's just like that. I, I play things flat. And so, um, I, my reads tend to be more up. And so like, it's just really nice though, to get back to making reads for myself. But it's also interesting because like, okay, I'm ranting now, but whatever, no one cares. Uh, probably no one's going to watch till this part of the video anyway. So the, um, I, uh, uh, so today, like in rehearsal for the Rudder Requiem, I was honestly feeling kind of sharp. And it's because the organ was a little low. And so this is another consideration with reeds. Um, we need enough resiliency and buoyancy in the reed to play lower sometimes, like maybe 439. And you also need something of resiliency and buoyancy to the reed to be able to play more up. Like I believe on any of my reeds, I can play at 442 easily. After playing in India too, I had just taken more reed. So actually I did get into the habit of taking in more reed to play at 442 in India and, and having a slightly less pointed embouchure. Because if your embouchure is really pointed, um, like fish, fish lipped kind of like, you will play things flatter. So like, you know, I learned in India, well, I need the reed to respond and have like all this, like these like excellent supple like qualities to it. Um, Cause uh, our uh, conductor, uh, our music director, uh, Marat, used to be very particular about like everything being, he used to be like, it just needs to sound like a fish in water, like absolutely effortless and flowing, like no hesitation whatsoever in the expression, in the music. And uh, and so that kind of, um, that I needed that response and ease and depth to the reeds, like, you know, but at the same time, they couldn't be flat. Marat was a concert violinist. And you all know that concert violinists play really sharp because they love to hear themselves. And, and string players tend to like to play even sharper, especially soloists, like string soloists, uh, play really sharp. And it's because they um, it helps them to project over the orchestra without having to just saw away. I mean, there's so, only so many things you can do uh, to project over a huge orchestra as a string instrument. And so playing sharp, slightly sharp is one option. So his ear was like trained sharp, almost honestly, in terms of playing. And so I understood that. I didn't debate with him about it, obviously. Uh, so I just kind of took it as a fact and, and, and was like, it, and how it affected my read making looking back is not all that negative because it really taught me how to make a read that can play flexibly at a higher pitch while still having a pitch floor and a pitch ceiling. Um, but uh, now that I'm coming back, like the organ was kind of 439-ish today, uh, kind of a flat organ. And so that we had to, you know, tune to the organ uh, in a sense. So uh, I was like, oh, I feel kind of sharp, strangely. And I was like actually wishing that my read was a little bit lower. And so today I just kind of fixed up a couple. The The first two you heard were actually, I fixed them up to be a little more balanced ni uh, nicely. Um, tomorrow's gonna be very humid, so we'll see how that affects things. It's gonna be raining. But um, you know, that's just the life of an oboist. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, about kind of read choice and stuff like that. And just kind of how you should try to take it in a positive light, try to see it in a, as something that's enjoyable, as something that's creative, as something that's explorative, uh, as opposed to something that's like, oh, I have to make a read, you know? Um, your attitude really towards read making uh, can change everything. Just see it as, wow, I get to craft so many different vocal cords, you know? Uh, which opera singer is this read gonna be, you know? Okay, so it's just funny. Which singer is this read gonna sound like? You know, it's just 
be think creatively enjoy yourself <laughs>